One is exhaling. All right, now this is a new read. Right? Okay. Now I'm going to vibrate right in the middle to give me an idea of what's, what's, what's happening, let's say. Mm -hmm. Now that does not give me anything at all. It's too hard. So I'll do it this way so that I'll be, and then that's one, and that's the other. So you're testing there. each side. You're, yeah. you're turning it, you're yeah. tilting it. Oh, that's ridiculous. But now. Unplayable. The, but now it will make it playable. Joe, so what are you actually doing now? I'm taking my knife and going along this bar. Now, that's your read. Where are you taking that off from? From here. The side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take off a little bit more in there because that's hard. And you're leaving the heart of the read alone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't go into the heart of it. Why is that? You're taking the heart out of yourself. How, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good analogy. Yeah. So see now, you see what happens here, how long it goes? Mm -hmm. A little while ago, I would have broken the reed in order to come to that far. So you feel it's generally better to start with a harder reed and take some down? Well, that's not how, that's not how you can get reeds. You buy them. And if they are like this, then you, you'll do it. So you're balancing the reed now, basically. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't call that balancing. I'm just taking a lot of this on the side to make it possible for me to, to work on it. Mm -hmm. And you're keeping the ligature on the mouthpiece when you put the reed in. Well, it doesn't make any difference, except if you you have the reed on, and then you put the ligature on, and you sub if somebody says, hey, Joe, I'll go like this, then the break, you break the reed. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. Let's see, to me. You're still testing the sides of the reed. Different Too stiff? Reed. Yeah. Did you hear it? Yes, I heard it. Mm -hmm. Sounded like your attack was airy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For you. What about the proper care of a reed? How should you care for it? Once you get it playing where you like it. Well, what I'm doing here, if I didn't do this, this reed, you'd say, is no good. It's too hard. Mm -hmm. And but once you'd go broke that way, and you still, every time that you buy reeds, you just say to yourself, they're very expensive, yes. Sure. So therefore, if you know how to do this, then you're in, you're in business. Well, once you get the reed playing exactly the way you like it, let's say you take off enough and it's playing good. Look at all, look at all the, this in here. Shavings. How do you keep the reed to last? How do you keep the reed lasting a long time? Do you have any? any no more than how can you tell when your mother and father are going to die? It's hard to tell. You have no way of knowing. Sure, it's hard to tell. It's the same thing that the reed is going to die. How do you know? Should you use one of those reed guards? Should you leave it on the mouthpiece overnight? Sure, Make as long as you wipe, the ins wipe out the moisture in, in the inside of the mouthpiece. So there's no excess of moisture. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you just put it on. Put it, leave it back on. Sometimes I leave my reed on after a job and and I noticed that it's very it's still very wet the next day. I didn't clean the moisture yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you get a good one, you, d you don't want to leave it there overnight. You know, I mean, it can With kind too of, much moisture. Yeah. yeah. Now, the right side does not vibrate well enough, so. And you're knowing that by t actually tilting the uh, the mouthpiece from one side just slightly so that you can vibrate one side and then the other side. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! 
<laughs> that's the way it feels. Like, let's see you play the Abir concerto now. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you couldn't even play blown that before at all mm. with the read the other way. <laughs> the right is still too much. Joe, what I'd like to do is show <laughs> the video audience. Uh, what it's like to practice these um, exercises, the overtones, and some of the other principles. So let's pretend we're in an actual lesson here. Uh, the first one that I wanted to try was the F to F, the lower F, right. without the octave key, much like the flute exercise. Yeah. <laughs> Sound okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, we'll yeah. You go as far as you can and almost open your mouth. Until you, it just almost. I'm actually oh, rolling yeah. out so I get oh, the thin yeah. part of the yeah. lip. Yeah. But how often do you, did you ever, have you ever gone on a job? When you played it that high? I can't say I have, but it's a good exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel the flexibility. I'm noticing that my tongue is changing position slightly, and I'm not even aware of uh, how do you explain that? It's just the ear is telling my the tongue. The ear is telling, and it's pretty hard to say. It's pretty hard to say. Nobody knows, but it's my inner ear. Nobody I'm hearing the pitch. Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. Now, you mentioned about keeping the pressure off the top. Let's see if I can oh, demonstrate. Oh, definitely. The, the upper body of teeth is a receiving. Is a re the lower body of teeth is what? A baby. Just chewing. Body. Mama. Yeah. X. 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 That sounds damn good. Joe, you're amazing. How did you, these overtones, I don't know many people that have taught them. <laughs> but you can still do that. <laughs> that's amazing. It'll drive anybody crazy, but that's all right. <laughs> Joe, I want to thank you for your time. Oh, the time yeah. that you spent showing us these principles. I'm sure many people are going to benefit from this. Oh, good. Uh, and uh, the legacy of Joe Allard lives on.